Dr. Lonergan, consumers tell us they're concerned about the rising cost of meat and poultry. What can you tell us about why prices are rising? Well, it's true that prices, food prices have been increasing, and I'm sure that consumers have noticed this in the past few years. And the reason actually has to do with weather conditions and drought uh, that have affected the cost of feed, price, feed prices and actually uh, some of the other production costs for, for meat and poultry. However, if we look at uh, over the past several decades, we know that the food prices are actually down, uh, say if we use 1980 as a reference. Well, how much are prices down historically? Well, if we use 1980 as a reference, we spent 31% uh, of our, our of our grocery budget on meat. Today, that number is about 21%. Now, what about prices for the products themselves? Are they overall declining? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we know that uh, the cost of a pork chop in that same time period is down about 38%. Uh, for a, uh, a steak, that's about a uh, 25% and for a ground beef that's down about 20%. What do other countries spend on food compared to the United States? You know, in the United States, uh, a metric that we can use is what percent of uh, our disposable income we spend on, fo on, on food. In the United States, that number is 6%. In Europe, in most European countries, that number is about 10%. If we look at um, some other countries, uh, like Brazil, uh, for example, that number is about 25% of their disposable income on food. And then certainly we know that there's other challenges across the world in developing countries. For example, in Kenya, that number is 45% of their disposable income on food. It's a big difference. Now, why have prices come down in the U.S.? Why are we able to spend so little of our disposable income on food? Well, you know, our system is very efficient, and over the years, we've actually improved the efficiency of livestock production to produce, to produce meat, uh, very efficient conversion of uh, feedstuffs to meat products. Certainly, we know that in our um, processing facilities, we've uh, improved efficiency, and we've really reduced waste, so we're getting more of the product that's produced to the consumer. You know, some people argue that we're victims of our own success, and that it's this affordable food that's causing an obesity problem. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's a very good question, and sometimes we hear that argument, uh, but the issue is much more complex than that. We know that, for example, our lifestyles have changed. We have many labor-saving devices, et cetera, and, we, and we, we don't walk as much as we used to. We, we take the bus, we might drive, we, instead of uh, walking or, or taking a, a bike, bicycle somewhere. Uh, so I think that uh, just blaming cheap food prices on the obesity problem is, is oversimplifying a really complex and difficult matter. So are you saying that low prices are positive? Our food production system uh, is, is really a modern miracle when you look at it. When we, when we spend less money on food, which is a requirement, we have more money to spend on other things that uh, help the uh, economy grow. We can buy houses, uh, we can save for a uh, uh, college uh, tuition, uh, and maybe even do some other uh, recreation things, joining a gym or, or doing some more hiking or, or other physical fitness activities.